Georgia Championship Wrestling was a professional wrestling promotion whose self-titled TV program aired in the 1970s and 1980s on Atlanta Superstation WTBS. Though based in Atlanta, the company also ran live wrestling shows through its geographic territory of Georgia. The territory was affiliated with what had been the world's top sanctioning body of championship titles for decades, the National Wrestling Alliance. Championship wrestling, we've got a couple of very... It was 1944. As the Batman and Robin comic strip premiered in newspapers everywhere, Royal Air Force gunner Nicholas Alchemade fell 18,000 feet out of a plane without a parachute over Nazi Germany and lived to tell about it. The Montreal Canadiens swept the Chicago Blackhawks in four games straight in the Stanley Cup Finals. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the St. Louis Browns at Sportsman's Park in the 1944 World Series. And Georgia Championship Wrestling was formed in Atlanta by promoter Paul Jones as ABC Booking. ABC held its matches at Atlanta's Municipal Auditorium every Friday night. Jones operated ABC for 30 years until his retirement in 1974. Though from the 1960s until 1972, he was assisted by his booker, Ray Gunkel. In fact, Jones was so infirm by this time that Gunkel effectively ran the promotion. On Christmas Day of 1971, Georgia Championship Wrestling aired its first television show, which was considered a Christmas special, since the actual series didn't begin airing until late January 1972. This would also be the start of a yearly tradition where the wrestlers and on-air talent would gather in the ring and sing Christmas carols. Other promotions would soon follow suit. The promotion underwent some big changes in 1972. It started promoting matches at the then brand new Omni Coliseum. It also switched its television outlet from its original home, WQXI-TV, to an upstart UHF station, then called WTCG, but later renamed WTBS. The TV show, which was hosted by Gordon Soley, was recorded in one of TBS's studio on West Peachtree Street near 10th Street in Midtown Atlanta. Shows were taped before a small yet enthusiastic live in-studio audience, as were most professional wrestling TV shows in that era. The show featured wrestling matches, plus melodramatic monologues and inter-character confrontations, similar to the programming offered by other territories, including the Northeast-based WWE. TV shows which aired on Saturday evenings were complemented with a Sunday evening edition. In the 1960s and early 1970s, there was a 60-minute wrestling program titled Big Time Wrestling, produced Saturday afternoons at the studio of WA Channel 11 in Atlanta. The NWA program was hosted by Ed Capral, ring announcer Charlie Harbin, and referee Leo Garibaldi. The show was broadcast at various times on WJBF6 in Augusta and at 11 p.m. Saturdays on WTOC11 in Savannah. The program included interviews with wrestlers pertaining to their upcoming matches. The program for Savannah was taped in Atlanta on Saturday afternoons then delivered by Greyhound Bus to Savannah to be broadcast that night. The new television deal would be one of Gunkel's last decisions. Ray Gunkel died of a heart attack later that year after a match versus Ox Baker in Savannah, Georgia. The death set off some internal problems with Ray's widow, Anne, who had worked closely with Ray and expected to get his share of the promotion being shut out in favor of Cowboy Bill Watts, with the promotion being renamed Mid-South Sports. And Gunkel decided to start her own promotion outside the National Wrestling Alliance, which she named the All South Wrestling Alliance. It didn't look good for Mid South at that point. Most of their wrestlers had gone with Ann, and Ann's promotion had obtained Mid South television time slot, though both promotions aired on WTBS. After two years of conflict, a mediator was called in, Jim Barnett who had owned promotions in Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Colorado, and even Australia. At this point, Ann's promotion went downhill, being locked out of arena dates, with wrestlers defecting to Mid-South, and Gunkel's All-South Wrestling Alliance folded in 1974. During the mid-1970s, Tim Woods and Johnny Walker, Mr. Wrestling and Mr. Wrestling 2, were one of the best teams in the world. They had a legendary feud with Ole and Gene Anderson, 
over the Georgia Tag Team titles, as well as the NWA Tag Titles, both of which went back and forth between them. Mr. Wrestling would occasionally wrestle without a mask, which would result in a feud between the two. On June 25, 1976, Georgia Championship Wrestling held one of the first ever Glow Circuit events, a precursor to today's pay-per-view. The War of the Worlds was held at the Omni, showing Muhammad Ali versus Antonio Noki direct from Tokyo, Japan on big screen, Andre the Giant faced Chuck Wepner direct from Shea Stadium, and four matches held live at the Omni, including Jack Briscoe versus Dory Funk Jr. and Bill Watson faced Dick Slater. The event was reported as being dull and uneventful. Muhammad Ali and Antonio Inoki split $9 million for avoiding each other, which at the time was considered one of sports' biggest rip-offs. The biggest cut, $6 million, went to Muhammad Ali for flicking a couple of undamaging left jabs towards Inoki and absorbing a lot of weak kicks delivered by the challenger to the boxer's shins and posterior. Fans shouted they want their money back. In the match between Andre the Giant and Chuck Wepner, the 33,000 fans at Shea Stadium were awed by the one-sidedness of the mismatch. The bout ended with 1 minute 15 seconds left in the third round, courtesy of a headbutt, followed by the boxer stumbling around before he was tossed out of the ring by the Giant and counted out. Andre the Giant and Chuck Wepner were both reported to have been paid 25 grand each for the match. And live at the Omni, Mike Graham defeated Tony Charles, Ken Mantell fought Skip Young to a draw, Mark Lewin defeated Pac Song, Bill Watts defeated Dick Slater, and Jack Briscoe fought Dory Funk Jr. to a draw. When WTBS went to satellite in 1976, making the station available to cable systems all across the USA, the renamed Georgia Championship Wrestling became the first NWA promotion to be broadcast nationally. Many of the NWA's regional promoters were unhappy, but Barnett claimed since he was only using Georgia-based wrestlers that there was no harm. Whether or not Barnett was in fact taking the promotion national is a matter of dispute. Some wrestlers such as Roddy Piper say that he was in fact doing so. Throughout the 1970s, Georgia Championship Wrestling was one of the main shows that kept the Superstation alive. On January 1, 1977, Georgia Championship Wrestling held a New Year's Night Spectacular at the Omni, where Sue Green won a Women's Battle Royal, the Anderson Brothers defeated Mr. Wrestling 1 and 2, the Mighty Igor defeated Abdullah the Butcher by disqualification, Dick Slater defeated Dusty Rhodes by disqualification, Thunderbolt Patterson defeated The Sheik also by disqualification, and Cowboy Bill Watts defeated the Mongolian Stomper. In 1982, Georgia Championship Wrestling changed its main programming name to World Championship Wrestling. Later that year, a 22-year-old Dayton man maintained he beat the Iron Sheik in a weightlifting contest, but was assaulted by The Sheik and never paid his $5,000 reward. Michael W. Haas, filed a civil suit in Montgomery County Common Pleas Court in November of 1982, asking for his prize money and 200 grand in compensation for his injuries. In the suit, he named defendants Georgia Championship Wrestling, Turner Broadcasting, Hara Arena, and the Iron Sheik, whose real name to him was unknown. According to the suit, the incident occurred on October 22, 1982, when Haas and his fellow softball team members attended an exhibition of Georgia Championship Wrestling at Hara Arena featuring the Iron Sheik. Somebody stood up at the mic and said the Sheik was the strongest man in the world, said Haas's attorney Carl Kramer. Then, Kramer said, the announcer offered $5,000 to anyone in the audience who could lift more weights than the Sheik. Everyone tried the weights, but Haas, who weighed about 225 pounds and stood six foot two, was able to outdo the Sheik, Kramer explained. The announcer counted the Sheik lifting the weights five times, and then counted Haas lifting the weights six times. According to the suit, Haas was declared the winner and the crowd went wild, Kramer said. But the Sheik came across the stage and attacked Haas from behind, hitting him in the head. The Sheik proceeded to kick Haas, who was on the ground by this time in the ribs and back. Kramer continued, everyone just thought it was part of the show, except Haas, who wanted compensation for his injuries, which were not described as serious. Unfortunately for Mr. Haas, he died the following year at the age of 24 before it went to trial. GCW ran shows in Ohio and Michigan, 
and wrestling returned to Dayton, Ohio on January 1983 after a layoff of no wrestling in Dayton for five years. The ring announcer was promoter Les Palmerville Sr., a Dayton native. Barnett was forced out in a major power struggle in late 1983. This set the stage for an important move in wrestling history, involving a regional promoter by the name of Vince McMahon. Georgia Championship Wrestling was primarily owned in 1983 by a conglomerate of Jack and Jerry Briscoe, Jim Barnett, and Paul Jones. The remaining 10% stake belonged to Al Rogowski, a matchbooker who also wrestled as Ole Anderson. Other stars in the territory included Jake Roberts, Dusty Rhodes, Dick Slater, Ricky Steamboat, Nikolai Volkoff, Larry Zabisco, The Road Warriors, and the fabulous Freebirds. July 14, 1984 is known as Black Saturday within the U.S. professional wrestling history. That day, Georgia Championship Wrestling ceased to exist when Vince McMahon unexpectedly bought the promotion and its TV time slot for his then nationally expanding WWE. The Briscoes sold their stock in GCW to Vince McMahon for $900,000 and guaranteed jobs with the WWE for life. After working out a few prior commitments, Georgia Championship Wrestling ceased to exist. Announcer Freddie Miller was the only member of the original Georgia Championship Wrestling on-air cast who did not quit in protest or just get replaced by the new owner. Vince McMahon had underestimated two major factors, however. The first was the differences in taste between fan bases of different geographical regions. The WWE style of wrestling sharply differed from that of GCW, with the WWE featuring cartoonish characters, storylines, and squash matches, when GCW featured more athletic competition. Secondly, Southerners resented the symbolism of a New York company coming down from the North and taking over their wrestling. In addition, WWF World Championship Wrestling was mainly used as a recap show, featuring matches which had previously aired on WWE's main programming venues such as WWF Championship Wrestling and WWF All-Star Wrestling. This angered WTBS owner Ted Turner, who was hoping that the WWE would have original matches originating from the WTBS studio at 1050 Techwood Drive. Finally, on March 2, 1985, the WWE changed the name of their program to WWF Georgia Championship Wrestling and began airing in-studio squash matches co-hosted by ring announcer Miller and play-by-play -play commentator Gorilla Monsoon. Along with the squash matches, Miller did interviews with many of the WWE stars mainly to promote the first WrestleMania. The WWE version of the show received much lower Nielsen ratings than its NWA-associated forerunner. As a result, on March 30, 1985, McMahon sold the Saturday night time slot to Jim Crockett Jr., who ran NWA-branded shows in the mid-Atlantic states. Jim Crockett Promotions took over production of the TV show using the same set. The show was again renamed to WCW Saturday Night reflecting an overhauled look at a new home studio arena at the CNN Center. In 2001, the WWE gained the rights to Crockett's library of GCW, WCW, NWA matches and shows, augmenting the WWE tape library through its purchases of assets and trademarks belonging to the now defunct WCW. Notable performers during this time included Sterling Golden, Austin Idol, The Junkyard Dog, Rick Martell, Wahoo McDaniel, Thunderbolt Patterson, Ken Patera, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and even Bret Hart. Coincidentally, in February of that same year, State Representative Dick Lane accused promoters in Georgia of selling wrestlers on unattainable hopes, poor working conditions, and low pay. The East Point Democrat was out to change that with a bill to create a joint boxing and professional wrestling commission. Lane claimed he also wanted to prevent consumer fraud in professional wrestling. Large money prizes for championship events were often announced but rarely paid off, the legislator said. The bill would demand that any prizes publicly announced 
must be paid. Lane said he decided to hold a public hearing after receiving numerous calls from wrestlers complaining about promoters. Dick Lane stopped dead in his tracks when he was simply told by promoters there was no problems in professional wrestling. After Black Saturday, Ole Anderson tried to carry on in the territory promoting championship wrestling from Georgia, which briefly aired out of Atlanta, with partner Fred Ward. In April 1985, shows began being co-promoted with Jim Crockett Promotions. On April 27th's main event, Arn Anderson wrestled Thunderbolt Patterson to a no contest in the Columbus Municipal Auditorium. Then championship wrestling from Georgia disappeared. The national titles, originally created in 1980 in Georgia, were carried on by Jim Crockett until 1986, when they were either abandoned or unified with equivalent titles. Animal had briefly competed as the Road Warrior before Ole Anderson paired him up with Mike Hegstrand to form the Road Warriors in 1983. They were initially brought into Precious Paul Ellering's stable as a replacement for his team of Matt Bourne and Arn Anderson after Bourne was fired by the company. The Road Warriors' high impact power style and unique attire quickly got them noticed by fans and dreaded by opponents. So much that some wrestlers would grab their bag and leave the arena when they saw they were scheduled to face the Road Warriors. In Georgia, the team quickly rose to the top despite being very young and without the traditional hang dues period, just because they were so believable in their role as power monsters. They gained a reputation for being very stiff and not selling simply because they could, and as a result, most of their matches ended quickly. They won the NWA National Tag Team Championship, a title they would win three more times while in Georgia. In 1984, the Road Warriors moved on to Vern Gagne's American Wrestling Association, along with their manager, Paul Ellering. According to Ric Flair, in his autobiography, To Be The Man, the Road Warriors were offered $5,000 to injure the Briscoes during a tag team match by an unnamed disgruntled source. Instead of injuring them, they promptly informed the Briscoes and told them not to worry because they were not those kinds of business people. Dusty Rhodes had already been involved in some of the greatest feuds in wrestling history by 1980, but perhaps none of them set the country on fire like Ole Anderson's heel turn. Longtime heel Ole Anderson had become a fan favorite for close to a year. At this time, his brother and frequent tag team partner Gene had gone into semi-retirement due to health concerns. Over the past several months, Ole would be a tag partner for Tommy Rich, Stan Hansen, and others in the Georgia area fighting various heel tag teams but chief among them were the Russians, consisting of Ivan Koloff and Alexis Smirnov. No one knew that Ole was just waiting for the opportunity to plunge the knife into Dusty's back. Dusty asked for not only Ole's help with the Russians in a cage match, but also asked that Gene be a special referee in the bout. They knew that the trap had been set, and as soon as the cage door was locked and Dusty had been worn down, the Andersons turned on him, and he was never the same again. This rivalry was as good as it got, a rivalry that spanned decades over several promotions. At first it was the prime champion against the up and coming champion, the basic story being told in the ring as Briscoe is a legit amateur wrestler who wants out to wrestle Dory. However, Dory is able to keep up and seemingly outdo Briscoe, making him frustrated. The then champ got older and Briscoe was clearly the number one contender. Race became the bridge champion and Jack had his reign. Add Terry Funk and Jerry Briscoe, and you have the main event for the region for the next 15 years. Tommy Rich and Buzz Sawyer wrestled and brawled with each other on many occasions for almost two years. It was a feud that became bigger than GCW itself. Their last match is what makes a feud legendary. Known as the Last Battle of Atlanta, it was one of the bloodiest matches of the 1980s, and it was the first cage match to have a roof which some say inspired Hell in a Cell. The 1960s saw a team called the Assassins take over the state whenever they were present. A Georgia creation, they began wrestling in Atlanta in 1961 and would be there on and off through 1964. When they returned in 1968, Tom Renesto began assisting with booking. 
PNWA Georgia Heavyweight Championship was a major title in Georgia Championship Wrestling from 1963 until it was unified in 1981 with the NWA National Heavyweight Championship. The first title holder was Chu Chu Lin, who was crowned the champion on February 5, 1963. The mass superstar was the final champion when the title was officially retired and unified with the NWA National Heavyweight Championship. Notable champions during the era included Dick the Bruiser, Sputnik Monroe, Nick Bockwinkle, Fred Blassie, and Rocky Johnson. The title was picked back up in 1998 by NWA Georgia, which became NWA Wildside in September 1999 when it merged with National Championship Wrestling. Along with this change, the championship became known as the NWA Wildside Heavyweight Championship. The title continued until Wildside ceased operations on April 30th, 2005. That was the untold story of Georgia Championship Wrestling.